What's up guys, today we're gonna do something a little bit different, a type of update video with a mystery tackle box unboxing. We're gonna dig through our Plano tackle box and show you how we keep this thing organized. We're also gonna show you a little bit of the pets, make some breakfast, and also uh, maybe even finish up by scooting the drum set we had in the office to the bedroom. I had made this intro already. Unfortunately, the audio was a little messed up and the uh, that's, that's all there is to it, so I'm refilming it right now. I hope you guys dig this episode though. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Six. Where you at, Zeke? Come on, come on. What is, all, what is all this? What is all this? I just already had breakfast, so he's feeling good. He's probably gonna go back to his bed and lay down. <laughs> come sit. She's got us all fixed up. Ooh, but now we're busting out the coffee machine. Boom. Straight from Seattle. Oh, yeah. Coffee's a brewing, tomatoes getting sliced up for the finishing touches, and we about to eat breakfast, then get into Mystery Tackle Box. Yes. Just a little bit for you, or? Yeah. Okay. Stories about how there's jaguars that he's seen up there, which I thought. As we chow down, I'm about to get... You're on my box. We're just about to unbox this thing, Marshmallow. All right, it's time to cover the box. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. This is exciting, guys. I tell you guys about what's in this box, go through the tackle backpack, and we can possibly set up the drums and get those things back in the room and do a little jam sesh before work. I gave you a preview. You're not even supposed to see this yet. I just switched over to the Sennheiser wireless mic. If you guys are curious about this thing, you can get some crispy audio for things like reviews and home shots and just sometimes the shotgun mic isn't ideal. And so the Sennheiser wireless mic is down in the description for you. Let's go ahead now and talk about this month's mystery tackle box. This is a subscription service that me and Devin have been using for over a year. A ton of good friends use it as well. And it's a way to identify new baits and lures that get shipped to you each and every month based on the time of year. What species you want to go after and it's a way to get some wholesale prices on a lot of these baits so you're getting a huge savings and it's a good way to just stock up on new tackle to go out and catch some fish every single month without having to worry it's one of the easiest ways to get into bass fishing so here we go with this month's box starting off with the dibble tips and tricks pamphlet this thing is pretty sweet and it actually tells you how to use each and every bait inside of the box it actually shows a pond and helps you kind of dissect and tear it down based on what's inside of the box when you might want to fish the points, the grass, weed lines, matted cover, uh, docks, tree stumps, under bridges, things of that nature. And so this right here is uh, gold all by itself. Then we have the what's inside card. This is what is inside of our box and it looks like there's uh, 10, 19, it looks like there is, so there's about $40 inside of this box and you guys can actually try your very first mystery tackle box using a link in the description below for as low as $4.99. Also, if you just use code Weston at checkout, you'll get those same savings if you don't go through the link, just searching mystery tackle box. So let's go ahead and pop out the first item in the box. Let's see what we've got here. This is the Castaic swim bait, four inch in blue shad. I'll be casting this around, creeping it nice and slow since it's the winter temps and the water's getting a little cooler i'll be casting this probably along the bank in the mornings going ahead and creeping it nice and slow i don't know how far this guy sinks right here or how quickly he sinks but i would assume this is perfect for just cruising above those grass edges and really getting some big quality bites right here in the winter time next up we've got some hooks these are pretty cool a different style they actually talk about uh, these are pin hooks you'll see they're a different shape than most of the worm hooks i throw they're recommended for like a six inch lizard uh, five inch fluke five inch Sanko, things of that nature, eight inch jelly. Uh, and so we've got a few hooks in here. I love when they include things like terminal tackle. It just gives you more options to choose from whenever you're rigging up your baits. And so we're definitely gonna be utilizing these hooks right here. And I think these are maybe even meant to get paired with it right here because it talked about um, five inch flukes. And these right here uh, look very similar to the flukes I throw, but the tail has a little bit of almost like a ribbon tail worms tail. And so this right here, you might be able to get a consistent reel out of it and get a little action, but I'll probably fish it just like the flukes I normally do. I'll probably use them on these hooks here and I'm gonna just do the pop, pop, pop and let it pause. 
pop, pop, I'm gonna fish it just like I would fish a fluke and uh, really almost like a, a jerk bait in a sense and pop, 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 let it sit. And I think that's gonna incite those strikes. Speaking of jerk baits, they actually include one. This is perfect wintertime fishing bait. The jerk bait, what's gonna happen is you can pop it, give it that darting action, and then just let it sit. And that's gonna really attract some quality fish. And this guy right here specifically dives two to four feet and it's just over three inches in length. So two to four feet is gonna be ideal for ponds that has some grass that's not going way up to the surface or maybe you can fish it along the bank lines. Maybe not cast parallel with the bank because if it does get down to that four foot depth, you're gonna be getting caught up, but maybe cast it at about a 45 degree angle away from the bank. Try and get it to that four foot depth, closing in on the bottom of some of these shallower ponds. And then as you creep it up to the bank, I think is when you'll get some more of those strikes and those bass are coming up from the, from the depths and smash this thing right here. You could probably get away with casting this thing anywhere in your local ponds and having some decent luck so I would just recommend getting this thing out into the water and you're gonna see all these baits and lures getting thrown in future videos of mine and I'm probably gonna try and do a slam with this box right here very soon so subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on if you're interested in seeing a mystery tackle box slam they're always a ton of fun to film and we are gonna try and show you firsthand how to use each and every one of these things on the spot. Next out of the box, Molex. I've been throwing their buzz baits for a long time and has so many catches on their buzz baits. This is the Nano Jig Finesse and Still Presentation. Finesse just means you're kind of downsizing from maybe your standard size jigs. When we say the word finesse in fishing, we just mean kind of downsizing. That is exactly what you're getting out of this Nano Jig right here. This guy has a smaller hook, so you'll put just a smaller trailer on, probably just a smaller craw, a smaller creature bait. I would put on the back of this, even something with less action and swim and kick and flutter than the norm on your jigs because the thing is in winter time they're not necessarily the, these bass aren't always looking for the most active treat they want an easy meal it's almost like saying who's the lion gonna go after the fastest animal that could probably get away from him or maybe the slowest or weakest animal in the pack he's probably gonna go for that easy meal the bass are thinking the same thing sometimes in these winter conditions especially when the bite is finicky and they are just lethargic and not wanting to go after much and you can also get this finesse jig into some tight situations where those big bass are gonna be hiding that you wouldn't be able to with your larger jigs that are gonna maybe get caught up in some of this brush and debris. Next up, these are pretty sweet by Z-Man. I looked at them at first and didn't know exactly the application, but what I found is that this is gonna be perfect for Ned Rig. Here's my terminal tackle box. I got it out specifically because I wanted to show you guys what I would rig these up on. So here's like a 10th ounce mushroom head jig hook. I don't know if the focus is gonna be on, but this is what I would pair this guy up with. So I would put one of these little craws right there on that Ned Rig hook, and I think this is gonna be devastating for those winter hits. This is what has saved me, the Ned Rig, from having a catch in one day and completely blanking and just getting skunked out there at the ponds. The Ned Rig, working it along the bottom can really get you some great sizable hits in the winter time because again, they're slow moving, but they will eat. And so something like this might be what you gotta get the job done with. Before I show you guys the last bait, we've got the monthly sticker in here. I don't know where I need to put all my stickers. Should I like toss them all over the Yakima roof rack on the STI or something? I literally have no clue. All right, guys, last but not least, we have a Carl's Amazing Baits crankbait, and this one is the Shiver Crank that dives six to 10 feet. So you guys are gonna wanna take out the yak or the boat for this guy right here, or hit a pond that you know has some serious depth right off the bat. This is not gonna be for your bank fishermen hitting the ponds. It's gonna just straight up get caught. You're not gonna be able to use it, but those winter bass do like to get down deep and hang out and congregate in certain areas of these ponds and lakes this time of year. And so these deep divers are really gonna be what can secure you some big catches in the wintertime. And if you've got a yak or a boat, this thing right here is gonna get the job done. So we might just have to take those out to finish the slam. You guys stay tuned. But that is everything inside of this month's box. Let's go ahead and quickly go over our Plano tackle box that I've gotten so many questions about in the past. And then we're gonna go ahead and try and set these drums up. It's literally closing in on an hour before I've gotta go to work. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, let's see what we got in here, ladies and gents. We'll start off with the front pockets, then we'll go ahead and dive into the innards of the bag. Let's go ahead and get into it. So, uh, starting off with the front pockets, I almost always keep my pliers, and that's just about the only thing I really keep in these front pockets. We got a couple different sets usually. So I've got the pliers ready to go. Obviously, since you have two of these little snap pockets right here, you might do something different with each one, but it's frequently Devin and me out at the ponds, and she might have a pair, I might have a pair, so we just keep two handy at all times right here. If we're just out there swapping lures, 
left and right and I don't want to open this thing up and throw everything right back into the container it's supposed to go into all the time. I have the quick access right here and I usually just toss lures in there. Then in these zipper pockets, there's two of these and they're nice size. So in this first one right here, I put all my terminal tackle in my ice box. This is a Guggen Squad collaboration with Bass Mafia. You guys can find these at local like Dick Sporting Goods and Field and Stream shops or online. And I have gone ahead and picked me one up and I use this for all my hooks, my weights, um, and, and the such. So I keep my terminal tackle all right there on the fly in case I need to retie or uh, grab some more hooks out. And that is really ready on a moment's notice. This other front zipper pocket I use for, see I've got a couple plastics in here. Usually whatever plastic I'm using right then and there, I might just store that bag right here for quick access instead of getting into the main pocket. And so I've got a couple plastics. Um, I keep my neck guard in here for the sun or, or sometimes if it's chilly in the winter, gotta have it on hand. I keep a battery pack. I like to charge my GoPro batteries on the go. Maybe my phone's gonna die. Maybe the big camera battery's gonna die. I have spares, but of course it's always good to have some extra juice on you just in case you never know how long you're gonna be out and so I keep that and got an iPhone cable in here what else have we got and I think that's about it we got a fluke I'll frequently use this pocket there's still plenty of room so I'll frequently use one pocket dedicated to like uh, maybe the GoPro and just st uh, stash it in there some extra batteries I have my pouch of batteries um, for that for the GoPro I've got my spares and so this pocket right here gets utilized for a lot of the camera gear on the run now let's take you guys into the main pocket we have five boxes in here and it's just because it's not on a level surface that they don't look like they're fitting right but they all fit nice and neat in here. So there's five boxes. Uh, one of them is currently empty. One of them has got, uh, this has got some soft plastics, spinner baits, it's got a whopper plopper, just kind of some random stuff. This next one has got a bunch of crank baits and it's got those Jackal Gantrail larger swim baits. So this is kind of like the crank box keep all of them organized. These all come with this Plano backpack as well. You get five boxes in this thing. They're probably not like top of the line, but they get the job done and they fit perfect in here. And we have just been rocking with them. What is this one right here? We've got more cranks, more spinner baits. We've got some, uh, this one's got some chatter baits in it, some jerk baits, more of those hard baits. And then in this one right here, ooh, it looks like some top water, some more chatter baits, but we got a bunch of frogs in this box. This is the frog box right here. And so really there's nothing too crazy. I don't keep anything too specific. We just like to get everything and have it ready on the go. So really the key benefits is that you got five boxes on you. You can really carry the majority of your stuff if you're just a bank fisherman, for sure. If you're on a boat, you've probably got extra storage compartments there and you're not worried about something like this. So I think this is perfect for your average pond hopping missions. Uh, you could even maybe upgrade the boxes if you wanted to and really get some heavy stout stuff locked tight and uh, don't worry about water and all those things that you could put in here, but I haven't gotten too fancy. I literally have been getting buy with the bare minimum. It's also got a zipper pocket up here that I don't think I ever use. It's got three softer pouches right here. I really don't use, I just keep that empty. And then in this main pocket, usually I have the scale on top, but it got thrown underneath. So usually the scale's right here, ready to go on a moment's notice. You guys know we're always catching big fish hardly. And so the scale is ready for when we do link up with the big ones. I've got some soft plastics, but the majority of my soft plastics I actually keep now in my money bags because it's so much easier to kind of sort through than digging through the top package of this backpack. So I've got just some soft plastics that I want to have ready with me on the go. Some of my favorites, probably some natural and blue baby colorations of the Bandito Bug, Alabama Crawl, Cracking Craws. We've got some trench hogs, you know, just a little bit to get us by, but the money bags are really where it's at as far as the soft plastics. And that's in a separate bag so I usually just carry a money bag around with me too. Uh, I carry a lot of stuff but this is perfect if you've got your ideal soft plastics. I could fit almost everything I put in those money bags in here but right now I've got those more dedicated to soft plastics. Here's an unopened clutch and I've got this pocket dedicated for maybe like you can even fit uh, two mystery tackle boxes in here. I mean it's just there's a ton of space in this top pocket and you can use it for whatever you want. It's literally it's got a zip up there's a pocket inside of a pocket essentially. This is all open right here and you can even zip it up and yet it does allow air through so you can keep your lures dry as well if you've got this backpack open on the run. Um, but what I do is I just kind of push this whole thing down and just treat this as open space. And right now I've got one of my Carl's Bait and Tackle boxes down in here. And then uh, just some soft plastics that are ready on the go. Like I say, there's really not a whole lot to it but this backpack is so great for somebody who's just hitting the ponds and wants to carry everything with them. Make sure you've got your pliers, make sure you've got your scale, make sure you've got your hard baits, your soft plastics. It really has more than enough room for you guys and that's all I wanted to showcase because I do get a lot of questions on this. 
Plano backpack and I got it at a local Dick's Field and Stream store. So go ahead and scope this thing out. It's priced pretty good for what you get in my opinion. I mean, school backpacks go for like double the price of this thing. So I think to get your fishing on, this is the way to go right here. Guys, as I'm finishing up this edit, I actually found it for a cheaper price than where I bought it on Amazon and you can get it super quick. So I will include the link down in the description if you guys want to pick up this backpack for like 62 bucks. Enough about this backpack. I just want to show you a little bit of how I've got it laid out. You guys have never seen me really talk about this in a video, except for maybe say that I, I like and enjoy it. And so there you have it. All right, so Devin's getting started on lunch. Let's go ahead and maybe move the drums out of the office and into the bedroom and close this thing out before we get into work. Boom, the drum room. We're gonna go ahead and take everything from the office and pop it right here. So remember how this looks, nice and empty. Okay, let's go ahead and grab all the stuff and take it into the room. literally have everything for the most part right where we want it. Uh, the China symbol looked a little low for a second, so I elevated it. The ride looked a little low, um, but this is pretty much it right there, you guys. So I have these sure in-ear headphones noise canceling that I picked up a while ago, so I usually just plug that into my iPhone and jam out. Got the double bass pedal down here. Uh, this is from way back in the day. This is the Tama Iron Cobra. I've had that pedal for so long, and here's my vantage point right here. So we've got uh, China, I would say this is like 18 inch China, 20 inch ride, what is this, a 16 inch crash up top, the uh, Minel 8 inch bell thing sounds so good, a 10 inch splash, you know, just standard, nothing crazy. This one's pretty cool, it's a 16 inch trash crash. Really unique sound, like it. And then just some standard uh, 14 inch hi-hats. All of these symbols came in a kit together, a minor kit, excluding the China symbol, which I'm pretty sure I got used off Craigslist. I actually purchased this Tama Superstar Classic Maple Shell Kit from Guitar Center for a pretty good price, I felt like, for how many pieces it comes with. I probably could do with one or two less toms, to be quite honest, but it's fun jamming around the whole kit. So we've got three rack toms, two floor toms, the snare drum, and then the rest of the goodies you see here. I've got some of these clamps to add extra cymbals on uh, instead of using a rack, which, you know, I've, there's, there's pros and cons to a rack. I'd probably like to have one as much as this is nice here. So this gets the job done for me. I might go ahead and let you guys listen to a little jam session. We'll close this thing out for y'all. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. This thing is a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and have at it. And just like that, guys, the vlog is over with. Thank you guys for watching so much. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get to the drums today because Devin had made us some awesome lunch. And uh, after that, there was just no more time left in the day. But I'm out here ready to park some cars, y'all. If you want to see more drum content, go ahead and check out my IGTV. I have a bunch of drum kit videos over there, a bunch of covers, things of that nature. So check that stuff out. I hope you enjoyed the Tackle Talk in today's video, and we'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace. <gasps>